Okay, we have seen that Spring manages the lifecycle of a bean, but it may not be able to manage the complete lifecycle of a prototype bean. Here is a statement from the official Spring documentation, and here is what it states. Spring does not manage the complete lifecycle of a prototype bean. The container instantiates, configures, decorates, and otherwise assembles a prototype object, hands it to the client, and then has no further knowledge of that prototype instance. This means that while initialization callback methods will be called on all objects regardless of scope, in the case of prototypes, any configured destruction lifecycle callbacks will not be called. It is the responsibility of the client code to clean up the prototype scoped objects and release any expensive resources that the prototype beans are holding on to. What this means is, Spring will take care of calling the lifecycle callback methods before the object is made available for you to use and after that it just does not have any hold of that object and so all the lifecycle callback methods that come after it like for example the destroy method cannot be called by the Spring container. But that being said we can work around it and create our own implementation. We're going to talk about it in coming video. But let us take a look at an example of this scenario. Okay, here we are again. What we have here is pretty much the same example as the one that we had looked at in Bean Lifecycle chapter. So inside our server config class, I just have the init and destroy method, and I've declared those two methods in here as part of the bean tag. And we also have the bean post processor class. It's as simple as that. Let's run the program and see the result. But do take a note that we didn't define any scope of this bean, so it has defaulted to singleton. And here is the result as expected. All the lifecycle callback methods were called, including the destroy callback method. I'm talking about this. But now, if I make this bean a prototype scoped bean, then everything, I mean all the lifecycle callback methods will be called until the point object is made available for the application. But after that, since Spring does not have control of it, Spring cannot take care of calling the destroy method. So I'm going to change the scope of this bean to prototype and now if you run the program you see it missing. This method is no longer called. So now the real question. Why does Spring does not handle or cannot handle the complete lifecycle of a prototype bean? Let's take a look. Alright, here are a couple of reasons which I can think of as to why Spring cannot handle the complete lifecycle of a prototype bean. The first of which is when the client code requests for a singleton instance, Spring does not or Spring does not give the instance itself but a reference to it. The reason why Spring had to do it because there might be other threads which may be requiring the reference of that object as well. So hence, in case of singleton scoped beans, Spring have to keep the instance with it so that it can manage giving the references. And since the object is with Spring, it can take care of managing the complete life cycle. But when you request for a prototype bean, Spring will create the bean and gives it to you. It does not keep the instance with itself. And so it does not have any hold of it to manage the rest of its life cycle. It's as simple as that. But Spring will try its best by calling all the callback methods before the object is handed over to the client code. And after that, it is you as a programmer who have to take care of all the destroying formalities if there are any. And as I've already mentioned, we're going to take a look at such example in next video. We're going to use the bean post processor to accomplish that task. So we indeed will be able to call the destroy method of a prototype bean. And here is another reason. Even if you somehow tune the Spring framework to handle the complete life cycle of a prototype bean, then it may simply make the container very inefficient. 
The reason is a singleton bean is guaranteed to have only one single instance, but whereas for a prototype bean, it can have hundreds, thousands or even millions of instances and we can't expect Spring Container to handle the complete life cycle of each and every bean that ever exists in your application. It's just simply not practical at all. So that's about it. I'll see you in my next video.